Welcome back to our lessons on electrochemical cells. In the previous lesson, we looked at the electrolysis of concentrated sodium chloride. We found that the sodium ion is present as a spectator ion and that the chlorine was made at the anode. Hydrogen gas and hydroxide ions are made at the cathode and even those are actually useful. The sodium ions combine with the hydroxide and make sodium hydroxide. Chlorine is used in so many things. Bleach for washing clothes, cleaning and disinfecting pool water, bleaching paper to make it white. It's even used to make plastics like the ones used to cover books and build drain pipes. The hydrogen from the process is useful for making margarine. It's used in the making of ammonia in the harbor process as well as being used as a fuel in some type of cells. The leftover sodium hydroxide is also very useful. It is used to make paper by dissolving out lignin from the pulp. Sodium hydroxide is used to unblock drains, make soaps and detergents. So, how do we make these three useful chemicals? Well, the three types of cells now being used are all based on the same reactions. We use common table salt, refined from the sea or a lake bed and use electrolysis of a saturated solution called brine. The first is the simplest. It's called the diaphragm cell and the concentrated salt solution called brine enters the cell on the left. After the brine enters the cell, the chlorine is produced at the anode. The diaphragm in the middle is needed to keep the chlorine separate from the hydrogen made at the cathode. The two make an explosive mixture that is very unstable. After the hydrogen is produced, the sodium hydroxide and leftover salt exit the cell. There is a better form of the cell called a membrane cell. It works in a very clever way. The membrane only allows the positive ions to pass through. The reason this is good is because the sodium hydroxide made this way doesn't have any sodium chloride in it. The third and last type of cell is being phased out because it makes use of large amounts of toxic mercury metal. The chlorine is made at the anode. But the difference is that the sodium ions are forced to be reduced at the cathode, made of mercury metal. The reason this is possible is because mercury dissolved the sodium that is formed, keeping it from reacting with the water. The mercury is then reacted with the water elsewhere in the process. Now, it's important to note that there is a lot of details in all these cells, but don't panic. All of the cells have the chloride oxidation reaction in common. The mercury cathode cell has two steps in the making of hydrogen. The reasons for using the different cells are in the table here. Diaphragm cells are cheap but make impure sodium hydroxide and are often made by using asbestos, which is very harmful to lungs. Membrane cells make the purest product but are very expensive. 
The mercury cathode cells also make very pure products but they use a lot more electricity and also use mercury which is very toxic element and causes brain and nerve damage. So the next time you use a plastic sleeve, write on some paper or even eat some margarine, remember that electrolytic cells help make this product.